This video is about inflation and deflation. Inflation is when you get a sustained increase in the average price level in an economy. And over time, as the price of goods and services goes up, the money in your pocket doesn't go as far in terms of what it can actually purchase. And this is what we mean by inflation. And deflation, predictably, is when the average price level decreases in an economy. So that's a negative rate of inflation. And that's not to be confused with disinflation, which is when the rate of inflation falls. So rate of inflation going from 4% to 3% would be disinflation, but a rate of inflation of negative 3% would be deflation. Now we measure this by looking at the price of a typical basket of goods and services. And that's not a physical shopping basket, but what we do is create a list of the most commonly purchased goods and services. This could be from a pint of milk to haircut or membership at the gym. And we attach weights to these items based on how commonly purchased they are in the economy. And that also needs to be updated every year to reflect changing patterns of expenditure as well. Because some things we bought a lot of 10 years ago, we don't buy any of at all today. And we use this list to create a price index. And that measures the percentage change in the average price of these items over time. And so the most commonly used one in the UK is the CPI, which stands for the Consumer Price Index. But you might also come across the RPI, which stands for the Retail Price Index. And there's just some slight differences in how those two different price indexes are calculated. And mainly in that the RPI includes housing costs, like mortgage interest payments, but the CPI doesn't. There are a huge range of things that can cause inflation in an economy, and most of them can be sorted into whether they're demand pull or cost push factors. And demand pull inflation is when increasing aggregate demand causes the price level to rise. Now, aggregate demand is made up of its components, which are consumer expenditure, investment, government spending, and net exports, or exports minus imports. So anything causing these components to rise may end up bringing about demand pull inflation. So for example, rising incomes causing an increase in consumer expenditure, an exchange rate depreciation, meaning more demand for exports, or an upcoming general election, persuading the government to increase their expenditure. Now, all of these things can cause aggregate demand to rise, which would mean the curve would shift to the right. So in our diagram, we'd move from aggregate demand to AD1. The economy starts to overheat with demand outstripping supply, and it puts upward pressure on the price level. And we move in the diagram from PL to PL1, and the result is inflation. The other type of inflation is cost push inflation. And this is when rising costs reduce aggregate supply, causing the price level again to rise. And this could be caused by an increase in labor costs. It could be rising raw material costs, increasing taxes, or even an exchange rate depreciation, which would increase the cost of imported raw materials. All these things mean higher costs of production causes aggregate supply to shift to the left. And again, this is going to put upward pressure on the price level. So you can see in the diagram, we'd move from short run aggregate supply to short run aggregate supply one, and the price level again moves from PL to PL one, and that is cost push inflation. Just worth pointing out that some of these factors cause both demand pull and cost push inflation. So higher wages increase people's income, which means more spending and demand pull inflation. But at the same time, those higher wages can also drive up business costs and cause cost push inflation as well.